We're seeing global economic concerns, pardon me, trump the Mueller report as well. Should that be the main point of focus for our viewers and their money right now? The global economic concern should absolutely be the main focus. You know, unless we are going to have a presidential crisis coming from the Mueller report, I think it's good that we will not see that. But the global economic slowdown is something investors need to get better understanding on, particularly as they look to position their portfolios. Well, that's why you're here. Help us get a better <laughs> understanding on how, is it a real slowdown? Uh, certainly. I mean, we are seeing um, slowing trends in China. Um, data from Europe last week, particularly Germany, was again weak. Um, issues there aren't surprising. The question is how much of that is leaking into the U.S. and is it a problem? Right now, we don't believe it is a problem for U.S. GDP, and we don't necessarily believe it's a, profit, a problem for U.S. Why not, economy. though, Patrick? Germany is the fourth biggest economy in the world. They buy a lot of our stuff. If they're slowing, they ostensibly have less money to buy less of the stuff we want to sell them. It's true. Um, although, you know, there's two portions of the U.S. economy. There's the services sector and there's the goods sector. Um, the services sector is being driven heavily by the consumer. The consumer is in great shape. They're finally getting um, pay increases. We're seeing wage inflation tick up. And even in the industrial side within the U.S., trends are still holding in there. So we're not seeing it necessarily leak into either of those two components of the U.S. economy. Is technology still the best place for our viewers to put their money? Yeah, we believe so. You know, we're talking about global economic slowdown. We believe investors should take down their economic sensitivity. They should pull back on materials, industrials, financials, those companies that are dependent upon economic success. Technology, communication services, the new sector, those are companies that drive their own demand. They have products consumers want and businesses need. That's a big statement, Patrick. Are you saying that technology lives outside of those concerns in some ways? Uh, in some ways, and, and I'm not going to say all technology companies do. Certainly, semis have, have a cyclical cycle to them, and, and we can discuss that. But for the most part, when you look at software, when you look in, um, you know, Internet services, there are a big portion that is, yes, I mean, somewhat divorced from the gyration. Because of the often in slowdowns, companies will spend more on software to try to automate themselves and reduce costs. Well, I mean, and if, and if we're talking about a CapEx cycle, I think it's going to be less of a traditional, I need to put a building in, more I need to put a server in. I need to upgrade my IT infrastructure. So if you look at CapEx over uh, the past year, it's gone more into those companies and less into the traditional, you know, digging up ground and putting in buildings. I would say the biggest knock on this amazing bull market is the fact that it's about 10 years old. It's like dog years, right? It might as well be 70 years old because we've never seen a bull market really this long unless you go back, I mean, eons. Mm -hmm. Does the age of the bull market matter or is age ain't nothing but a number? I, age ain't nothing but a number, to, to use your words. You know, we look at the health of the bull market and that's really what we're concerned about. Um, going back to the economy, we don't see a problem there. PMIs looking quite strong for the U.S. We're still creating jobs. There is still robust demand in the U.S. economy. So it doesn't lead me to believe that we are headed into an economic recession. Corporate profits are going to hold in there. Risk is coming in. So therefore, investors are taking up their exposure to the market. That's really what is driving the S&P higher. And your goal and your, and your target is 3025 on the S&P 500. So you remain not wildly bullish, but you still see a few percent up. Yep. And, and we're looking for around 1% per month.